Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at some stuff that I've been following on Discord as well as Reddit. And then yes, it has to do with the missiles again, only on account of the fact that uh, some people are getting kind of worried about it and they're kind of missing, like I like to say, you see the trees but not the forest kind of a thing like that. Now we've talked a lot about these missiles in our previous videos of course. Uh, we've uh, showed you what they look like over in Simple Rockets, uh, we've fired SAMs off of the SA-2 over in SAM Simulator, we've done stuff in DCS tons and tons and tons of stuff with it but uh, people again try to think that this particular model is going to be accurate to this to this to this to this but the big thing is is i think a lot of folks who struggle with that are seeing the trees and not the forest kind of a thing like that you know so um, this is kind of my perception this is how it works stuff like that now I, we're going to go ahead and show you sort of some of the problems that people face when they're using these weapons as well as to try to understand just how incredibly lethal they are if they're fired perfectly, they're in perfect conditions and the crews are perfect. If you remember a while ago too, we actually fired a video off where um, we tried to shoot down a guided weapon with a ZSU-23-4 uh, Sheikah. And uh, we succeeded in command easily uh, when we tried it both in uh, the SAM Sim as well as doing it in a DCS. It was hopeless. It was just too hard to do. So it's one of those things where theoretically, mathematically, you can do it. If you're perfect and you have perfect warning, perfect time, perfect engagement and everything's working great. But the reality is things actually are very much more challenging than that in the real world. So what I've done here is I put together a couple pieces so that you can kind of see sort of some of those problems visually, as well as to understand, you know, the dynamics of these kinds of shots we take. So right now I've got myself an F-14A, or 15B, or rather, and he's cruising along. Um, we're pretty well loaded here. We've got uh, four of these lovely AIM-54s, a couple Sparrows. <laughs> Man, do I hate Sparrows. And we have a couple AIM-9Ms, which are fantastic weapons. And we're just supposed to basically fly over here and uh, engage stuff. So I'm sitting there, we've got our AIM AUG, which is a fantastic radar system, and I picked up a bogey right away. He's traveling on a 230 knots, so that, that's quick. Uh, that's, again, when I think 230 knots at 36,000 feet, I immediately start to think things like MPAs and stuff like that. But we're already going to face our first problem here, and that's not that we're not in range, which as you can actually see by the AIM-54's range circle here. It's the problem is, I have no idea who this guy is. Now, the interesting problem is, I'll go ahead and uh, fast forward again. He's just a little target that uh, shows up on my scope kind of a thing. So I keep doing my cruising thing. I keep doing my cruising thing. Uh oh, we got ourselves another target. So let's go ahead and click on this one real quick. I know nothing. All I know is they're out there. Uh, 36,000 feet. We got another one that's doing 395 knots. What is that? That could be an F-16 that's heavily loaded. Uh, we know by the range that uh, they're pretty far away. We're detecting this guy at about 162. Uh, doing the math real quick, by the way, I can tell you that these are pretty big targets on account. You just couldn't detect something that super small fighter size at those kind of distances. But um, you can see now I'm starting to slide into my engagement range here. And I'll fast forward time a little bit. One of the things I love about command is I could test these things in seconds, you know, things that would take me hours and other software. And I still have no clue what either one of those targets are. Now I've entered into the danger range here. I could actually take this shot. But the problem is I still don't know what it is. So my absolutely fantastic weapon, I'm basically getting kneecapped here because I don't know what I'm going to be shooting at. So I'll continue fast forwarding here. And again, this is uh, not so much a problem in DCS because you can just, uh oh, we got something else. What do we have here? We have a pair of very, very, very close boggy. Uh, let's see here, we picked them up at 140 miles. Wow, we picked these guys up easy. Again, when there's no terrain underneath you, it's very easy to do. And we can see these guys are doing 480. Uh, that's a typical fighter speed here. So it's probably safe to say that we're probably dealing with some enemy fighters or some kind of fighters here. We actually don't know. So at any point, of course, we could take our... Sh oh, ah, good news. We can identify that that was a Boeing 747. Whew, I was close. I almost took the shot on that one. But you'll see here that if I click on my guy, um, the range to that particular target when I identified them was about 70 nautical miles. Now, we have a TCS system built into the F-14B, which is a godsend. Without that, I just have no idea how we'd be able to identify them at that distance. So the good news is, that's a civvy. We don't have to worry about taking a pot shot there. Whew, oh, the poor guy. I was about to nail him. Notice, by the way, we're still 70 miles away. So we'll go ahead and speed up time a little bit. And um, we'll kind of uh, evaluate what's going on here. All right, we still haven't confirmed what that other two targets are. Now, this one's, uh, let's see here, we have a distance. Ah, we know that it's a recon of some kind. We also have detected that they're using a surface search radar here. So recon, a 400 knot recon. What's recon that's 400 knots? I still need a visual positive identification to the hostile by the time I fire. Now, here's the cool thing here. This range now is about 50 nautical miles. Uh, for those of you who know the uh, Tomcat and DCS, 50 is a sweet spot. Um, if you take a shot at 50, you're going to hit just about everything. It's just you have half of your energy reserve ready to go. 
But we still, oh, there we go. Now we can finally take the shot. Ah, it was a tuple of 95 figures. Let's go in here. We can see one has already been allocated for the claws here. We'll go ahead and take that pot shot. The Phoenix leaves the rail. Let's go ahead and switch to 3D view so you can understand just how powerful this weapon is. Now, I'm doing a single target track basically right now because of the fact that he's so close and there's nothing else dangerous. So this thing's got to climb on up. It's uh, doing Mach 5 here. Uh, Mach 5 is it's fast. It's uh, almost 3,000 nautical miles. So we're building up a ton of energy here. And uh, we're just going to roll over. Again, we popped up. We're doing our parabolic arc here. We're coming back down. Uh, the Tupolev 95 crew. Let me go show you what they know right now. Of course, they know there's a Tomcat out there looking at them. But let's go pop over to them real fast. And you'll see the fact that uh, the only thing that they know is that an F-14 has been launched at them. And uh, they were able to go ahead and identify it. Am I in God's mode? No, I'm not. So all we know here is that something that's a fire control radar over in this distance, we can't even tell you whose it is, has done something, but we actually have no idea at the moment that I've even been launched on. Again, that's a big point here, that in other games, as soon as something launches at you, you know that something's launched at you. This one, this missile still has half of its fuel and it hasn't even been detected yet, much less this guy having been detected. So you can see just how powerful this is. So now our Phoenix is gonna re-enter orbit here. Again, remember the ratio of speed here is insanity. Let me go ahead and I'll pause for just a second here so you can just understand the physics of the shot. So we can see this thing coming down now. We're still doing, uh, what do we got here? Um, that's uh, 3,000 nautical miles per hour. That's <laughs> a lot. But our tuple of 95 here, if I actually click on him real fast, you'll see he's doing 395 knots. 2950 divided by, uh, what do we say, 350, 295, something like that. Uh, let's see, that's a 10 to 1 uh, ratio there, which means that if we wanted to do the uh, angle that we need to lead the target by, that would be 1 tenth of uh, 45 degrees. 1 slash 1 zero times 45. Wow, that's nothing. That's uh, barely, barely, barely. So this missile needs to wiggle its nose by tenths of degrees in order to make adjustments for any movement that this target makes. Even if this guy could pull up 9 Gs, this thing would have to like wiggle its back fin just a tiny bit in order to go ahead and do that. It turns on its active radar, and it just comes wham. <laughs> oh, and it does exactly what it was engineered to do there. Now, the point I want to show here is that target was struck at a distance of 28 nautical miles. Notice 28 nautical miles is plenty in range for many, 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 many modern weapon platforms, uh, your PL-12s and stuff like that. There's even like crazy uh, dogfighting missiles that can reach out that far. And the reason that's so important here is in that time, the buddies in that formation could have changed position, uh, weapons could have been exchanged back and forth. There's really a lot that happens, even though we had to wait for that actual identification to the actual destruction of the target. And that's an important point because in the real world, we're stuck with that. Now watch what happens here. So uh, we need to identify these targets, obviously. You know, we're pretty confident they're probably not friendly. But um, again, we don't know. So we can't just fire. Uh, there's no rules of engagement. This is YOLO, kind of a thing like that. Or if you do have those rules of engagement, I promise you're going to get uh, blown up a lot. Uh, you're going to kill a lot of civilians, basically. Now, some of you, of course, are saying, it's a game. I could just mark them hostile and go to town here. We don't know that they're not two F-104s coming back from a base or something. Obviously not 104. It's a little slow for that. But um, we don't know that. So if we just fired in the real world, we'd be in a lot of trouble. But take a look here. My massive range advantage is not doing anything for me. They're 40 nautical miles away, and I have still not made a positive identification. What do I know about them? Um, we know that they're unknown type because they're kind of small, and they're moving pretty quick. Obviously, a little bit of deduction on the part of this crew could probably identify what's going on. Notice neither one of these guys have accelerated at any point either, so we're still not sure. But look at the distance now. We're 33 nautical miles away. You know, my uh, massive, massive, massive range here really isn't doing much for me because on my own, I'm in a bad place. I just know that this is a fire control radar I'm happily ticking away. But until I get that positive identification, I'm in a lot of trouble here. Oh, we got one. All right, we can at least fire at that one. <gasps> look! Uh-oh, look at that. Now, the important thing that I want you to see here is the fact that even though the um, you know, I've got this powerful, extremely lethal missile, and I showed you how powerful that thing is, I'm 25 nautical miles away, which is now in the danger zone for this particular platform. Now, the nice thing here is um, you can see my MiGs immediately. I popped a couple shots. My F-14, look at this has no idea what's been fired at him. If I actually do uh, this view, you can see there's an Alamo chasing him down right now. But he doesn't know that. The only thing he knew is that there was a missile out there somewhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the P key there and I'll have him flip around and I'll come back around for another pass. He's gonna fire another one. Oh, there goes another two. 
And the weapons are blind. Here comes the Elmos. And they're not going to achieve much. Oh, we got one. And we got the other one as well. So you can see there, in my little engagement, I have run myself completely out of missiles here. As a matter of fact, I think the Elmos are still chasing them down. But you could see that even with that fantastic, fantastic range advantage, it did nothing for me because of the fact that I had to identify my targets. And that is a known kind of common problem that you have in the real world. You know, we can't just fire willy-nilly like you can in other games. Now, of course, let's change the scenario a little round and watch what can happen if you start to make this a more combined arms engagement. Haha, -ha, now the deck is a little stacked. <laughs> All right, we have a couple of things that are working in our favor here now. Uh, we have ourselves the Arley Burke uh, ready to rock. Of course, we've got our F-14 ready, and we have an E-2D. And uh, immediately what we've done is we've identified the Boeing 747. How do we know? Uh, actually, there's a lot of things we know about that target. Uh, the first thing is first is uh, we look at it. Uh, we have no emissions issues here, so we don't have to worry about that. But we have NCTR, and we casually identified this aircraft, which made it easy. Now notice, we've also automatically identified our bear. We've also, of course, identified our MiG-29s already. You know, we're not in God's eye view or anything like that. It's just because these radars are that good. So now we've got some intel. So let's go ahead and engage, uh, just the way we would normally do. And now watch what happens. We enter into a nice range, as everybody knows from DCS. Uh, thou shall not fire an AIM-54 at a maneuvering target at the maximum range. It would just be absurd. There we go. So now we're in range. So this guy right here is, uh, let's see, it's about 100 nautical miles away. Uh, for those of you who uh, have not had a chance to read this excellent article on AM54, um, you can kind of steal the lettering uh, right off the top here and have a good time with this one. But you'll see what I mean in a minute. So of course, we're not going to fire at this range. Uh, this is a tuple of 95. It's a non-maneuvering target. Easiest thing to fire would be about 75% of our maximum range there. Um, in DCS, I think I usually fire at about 70. So that looks like a pretty good range there. So we'll just wait. So one of the cool things I like is if I hold my mouse right here and just kind of wiggle it a little bit, I can actually see how the range changes. And my Tomcat fired at maximum range anyway. You are silly, sir. You are silly. Why would you do that? Keep in mind, in the time that this particular target has traveled, it has uh, closed the distance. You know, it, it's not still at maximum range here. So now if I switch to the other guys real fast, now observe this. You'll see our tuple of here has a, a pretty confident, it has no idea he's been fired on. He's literally a non-maneuvering target. He has zero warning, nothing. All he knows is there's a fire control radar out there that's clicking away. That's it. So there is no maneuvering. There is no dodging because he just doesn't know that he's been fired upon. Now, as anybody knows from any good dog fights, uh, the one who loses is the guy who loses sight. So this is, again, another classic case of a weapon that's basically going to be re-entering orbit. Uh, let's see, we're doing a Mach 2.5 here. The radar clicks on at the last second. Uh, the Tupel of 95 guy gets a big red light over on his little radar warning receiver. They start scanning the sky through the little tiny windshields here, and all of a sudden, this thing just comes around at about 750 knots and does nothing. Now, you're wondering, why did it do nothing? Uh, the easy reason for that is, if you probably noticed the last couple feet there, is it was turning massively. It basically had to take a left turn in order to strike the target. Hence, uh, don't fire ranges at maximum there. So, of course, our tuple of 95, our I-14, goes ahead and fires the rest of his rack here. Now, the tuple of 95, pretty confident, is toast. Yeah, I had a feeling. That was a much better shot. Our two MiG-29s on the flip side, these guys um, don't really know what's coming at them either. Uh, they know that there is something out there that has fired upon them. Again, big difference between the games here. They have no idea. All they know is there's a hostile fire control radar. There's no evidence anywhere in here that shows that they're about to be struck by something that's very, very tiny, traveling very, very fast, from above them. And again, that makes a huge difference when it comes to engagements like this. As a matter of fact, we'll stay on red team for a second here. And they're just cruising, they're cruising, they know there's a fire control radar out there, and all of a sudden they spot these two missiles. Now these two missiles were actually caught by the SPO here, and that's actually going to be the radar warning receiver. So the missile little light in the, if you've ever seen one of these radar warning receivers, it's like a bunch of little lights and there's a little light on the bottom which tells you, so they know there's a missile out there. So the only reason they spotted the AM-54s here is because of the fact they picked up the Seekers. Now these were the most effective, quickest acting MiG-29 crews I've ever seen in existence. They were around 360 degrees full afterburner within seconds of detecting that missile. There was no, where's it coming from? There was no equipment issues, nothing. So of course, in that case, they were able to casually avoid that weapon because they had time, they had warning, they had training. 
Now, had that weapon be fired at a shorter distance, this would have been a very, very different engagement. So now the interesting thing we have here is uh, we're firing a pair of AIM uh, 7Ps here. And you can also see the Alamo took the shot. Um, unfortunately, my AIM 7s are going to do absolutely squat here because they're just going to go blind and nothing's going to happen. So, of course, my uh, Tomcat does a little loop-de-loop -loop and gets fired at more Alamos. So I think I might lose a Tomcat to this. Look at him go, look at him go. <laughs> Again, one of the safest... Oh, that was close. Do we have anything left? Uh, let's see if I have anything left, because we probably get within range to fire a couple uh, sidewinders here. But um, even then, that's uh, going to be a really, really tough shot. I love how... <laughs> Didn't expect that, did you? Got to love those uh, Russian dogfighting missiles. Those things are so much fun to play with. Man, this uh, Tomcat cannot get a break here. Oh, boy, he's coming back. Oh, there goes another one. Anybody like a missile that can literally shoot at a 90-degree angle? It's real fair, isn't it? <laughs> now, of course, uh, we could come over here and uh, end this argument very, very quickly. So, um, yeah, go ahead and click that button. And now the battle's over. But the important thing is, is that you could see how all that interacts and that it's, it's complicated. It's very, 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 very complicated. Now, some of you are saying, of course, um, is there any takeaways we can have from this? Well, let me show you one more thing. All right, we got this set up already. The only thing I've done differently here is uh, I've actually taken a couple moments to adjust the WRA of this F-14B. So what I did is I basically said, uh, don't fire at anything past 45 nautical miles. Again, uh, my DCS folks, I know the 45 nautical miles a lot because uh, that's like the magical distance to engage fighters at. And now uh, when you do engage folks at that distance, for me at least, I have a lot of luck. And again, there's a lot of things. Again, I try to create some geometry here with some funky mountains and stuff to make things interesting for us. But it's important to see that difference. So what I've done is he, if I actually press Control F, 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 F9 here, go to WRA, M54, you'll notice everything is the magical 45 nautical miles, which is not half it's slightly less than half of max range here so i've also ordered him to only fire a single missile so let's uh, go ahead and see now keep in mind we've already identified the targets which now means i have all the cards in my pocket here i can um, basically pick the best time to take the best shot in the best situation with the best geometry and we can see this guy right here is about 57 nautical miles away remember we're going to take the shot when they get a little bit closer now, for some of you, of course, you're saying, this is getting kind of dangerous. Uh, do we really want to get this close to uh, something like this? What if it's a MiG-33? Um, a MiG-33. I have invented a new MiG. Huh. MiG-31. Um, we got a problem. But that's, again, for another day kind of a thing. So we have a distance here. Uh, let's see. That is about 45, 46. It's going to be about right there when the shot is taken. And, of course, uh, the missile will leave the rack right now. So our missile, of course, like I said, uh, this is just taking, what do they say in the little strategy guides? We climb up. Oh, we're still doing Mach 5 here. We're burning, we're burning, we're burning. We're climbing up to the top, our apex here. We have plenty of fuel left. Look at this. So now the missile arcs back downwards. And of course, in the real world, this number would probably get bigger. But now we still have some power left in this missile. You can actually take, like, you can't see it well. But I've got like a quarter tank of rocket fuel left in this thing right now. So when this thing comes down in this little tuple of 95, poor guy here, it's going to be moving pretty quick. And now you can see there that it casually <laughs> vanished. I like that. Uh, let's see here. Base attack, uh, adjusted for altitude, uh, 0.5 uh, proficiency, regular, yeah, you know. Weight fraction, um, look at that, an 84% chance of a hit, which makes perfect sense if you just think of the engagement here. So let's go speed up time here. And now we have the Supesky MiG-29s again. Now we fire right at 45, which, like I said, um, I played this enough times um, to go ahead and know that, like I said, that's about the sweet spot for this weapon, a little less than half. So these go traveling. Uh, remember, our MiG-29 buddies have no clue that they've been fired on at this point. Uh, like I said, in other games, they might have some kind of warning here. Uh, like I said, they kind of, are we on God's mode? No, we're not. We have a pretty good idea this guy's over there somewhere, but that's okay. Let me hit this. Yeah, okay. So we did acquire him. Oh, there's the missile. And we picked up the missile, of course, with our IRST, which, to be honest, I think that would be a bit of a reach. Now, our missiles here are still burning. So they still have tons and tons of energy here. And remember, these missiles, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see here. There. You can see that their aim point is a little teeny tiny point. Look at, look at the distance here negligible distance just because of the speed ratio of this weapon here. And again, a last minute whatever is probably not going to do much for you here. But notice the missile sailed uh, right past them and exploded nearby. Uh, one thing that I think they're going to change in command. Of course, notice neither one of those missiles worked, and that was almost a perfect shot. But our good friend, the Tupolev, of course, uh, got it the hard way, so to speak. 
Now, just like we see in the other games, it's exactly like it basically played out there. Now, again, I wanted you to kind of see that because it did everything right, and I mean perfectly right. Now, notice again, they know they can't run, so they just turn themselves and uh, basically make themselves a nice deflection target. Our M54 has achieved nothing. Uh, oh, oh, here comes an Alamo. And you can see the exact same thing happens again. Now that, now that you've kind of seen all those different components, you can kind of see how everything interrelates. My big point for all of this, and I think that's important, is there's more to it than just the missile itself. There's the engagement, there's the identification, there's the firing at the correct range, of firing and maneuvering targets. Can the target detect the incoming missile? All those things are actually implemented in here, and you can see kind of how they affect the accuracy of a shot. Now, of course, in the real world, it'd be fun if we could grab all these and have them all shoot at each other and find out what happens. And at that point, then things like mechanical reliability and crew quality become really, really important. Enjoy.